All right, everybody. Welcome to the very first two-person celebrity entrepreneur's adventure. Celebrity entrepreneur's adventure number 400. All right. to me to get the shortcut to who you want to be so I know I know a lot about you I know what you do but the question is who do you want to be so I want to be the person that people actually turn on their phones tune in on television go on to social media Google Dana Davis to provide them some inspiration to help a person get to their next step, whatever that may be in life. It's not just about driving or helping someone with their career, but literally helping someone with their life, with, with being able to be on a level like Oprah, where she is able to connect with so many people using her talent of just being herself and being a leader. That's really what I strive to do. I want to fill stadiums of people who feel great about themselves after they walk out the door. I want to be able to literally run the television screens. Everybody's looking and seeing and cannot forget about Dana Davis and what of an inspiration she is to people, to them. That's okay. what I want to be. That's who okay. I believe I am. All right. That's, I love the big, the big goal, the big vision. I love that. At the same time, you gotta ha you gotta pay the bills. Right. At the same time, it's Dana Davis. <laughs> At the same time, I want you to understand that all the money is in coaching and consulting. Okay, all the money, every bit of it. Every bit of the money is in coaching and consulting. That's why I see ads for Tony Robbins coaching. Here he is filling up arenas. Here he is, you know, making all the money and he makes 10% of the money in the entire seminar industry just with Date With Destiny. And yet I see ads for Tony Robbins coaching. Not for him to be your coach, but for his coaches to be your coach, right? Because all the money is in coaching and consulting. So, you know, I, I appreciate your big vision of you, watch your step, wanting to be Oprah. That's, that's great. But, it, you know, to be Oprah takes decades. Right. Oprah didn't come out of the womb as Oprah. It took her, it took her a long time to become Oprah that we know today right. and along the way you need to be making lots of money that's how you will be able to sustain because being a coach is, is hard work you know doing one-on-one -on -one sessions like this takes a lot and the only reason we're doing a one-on-one -on -one session like this my sweet is because how many years have you been a diamond member? Okay, many several years, right? We've we've been to Europe together to attend my my events. We've been all over the United States. You've been to Mexico to our house many times. You stayed many weeks at our house. So, like, you notice we walked right by somebody in the doorway. I didn't invite him on this walk. He's a brand new low level client. So, you know, if, for you to be able to do what you wanna do, you need to have high level clients the way I have high level clients who pay me a lot of money for coaching and consulting. Okay? Yes. All right, now, who do you wanna be in that, in that realm? Because that's where that's the most important realm there is. Right. So I don't want to. What I can tell you, what I don't want. I don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I 
considered a life coach. Yeah, exactly. I don't want that. Right. I know that uh, the skill sets that I can help people build, of course, can be put towards their actual personal development, but I want to help people make money as well. Uh huh. And one of the key things to making money is having that, being able to have that confidence and have an understanding of what to do when those barriers do come into place. And I know that I'm very good at that. I know that I can help people, business owners, entrepreneurs, even leaders of organizations and corporations get to their next step, whatever that may look like. Okay. Okay. Now, given what you just said, I want to use some of the coaching that I paid for because uh -huh. I've paid for all the coaching. I've hired all the mentors. I've gone to all the seminars. I've been doing this longer than you. So Definitely. that's one of the reasons why you pay me is to get the... A, the knowledge that I have from spending all the money and, and time and effort and work doing this stuff. And that is don't change your act, change your audience. Yeah. So how can you, you know, right now you're very successful in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. You have a high level corporate job in a major corporation. So how can you do for others? How can you change your audience? And do what you're being so successful doing right now for the corporation and do it for a different audience that's going to pay you more money or, um, yeah, right. or give you more freedom mm -hmm. or both, right? You're right. Changing my audience because currently my audience is a, <laughs> has set fee, right? That's set that's right. amount of people. Yep. Uh, you know, there's not much growth there and there's not much opportunity for the freedom, which is super important to me. Um, wow, look at that Jaguar. That's beautiful. Damn. <laughs> Allie had, Allie had those kinds of cars. <laughs> and I've never really been a Jaguar person, but that one? That's a hot Jaguar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so continuing on. Changing your audience, because right now you have a set fee. You get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. It's a nice paycheck, but, but... It's limited. It's limited. It's limited. I think the more exposure that I have doing these videos and really stepping out and putting myself out there more um, is going to make a difference. I really need to do more conferences. I'm going to have um, expose myself into different areas of people who I know can and want my services and can afford them. Yeah. Okay. So what is the service that you want to provide? So I am looking to do, um, honestly, I love leadership. That's one of the things that I'm, ex I'm really good at. Yeah. You know, we can talk about passion, but we can talk about what I'm really good at. Right. And I know that since I understand leaders, I understand how to develop leaders. That's the arena I need to be in. And those are the people I need to talk to. And it's usually the business owners not really like the lower level managers, but business owners mm -hmm. and individuals who are trying to step into the world of entrepreneurship as well, that do not have any of these skill sets, that would be most beneficial for me to coach. All right, business owners. So you need to get in front of business owners. Right. And even then, as I'm sitting here <clears throat> talking to you, yep. we're kind of working through this. Yep. I realized that I've defaulted into a mindset that I've had, which is I gotta help the people who need the help. <laughs> which is great but the audience of um, early entrepreneurs they can't afford my services yet right they're not there yet right so that would be something that I can do once I've gotten to that point um, you know maybe building a program for them once I've gotten to that point but well, I really look, need to target um, businesses who are thriving yeah and making seven eight figures yeah who need that help with leadership development which is a necessity. Yeah, like maybe small companies that want to become bigger corporations. Right. Your experience is in the realm of big corporate leadership. Right. Exactly. Okay. So with that as a basic 
target, okay? We don't know exactly who you wanna have as your new audience, but we do know that the new audience should be small to mid-sized corporations that wanna grow their leadership, that want a successful leader from a big corporation to help guide them to where they wanna go in terms of leadership, okay? That's a nice general target. There's lots of that out there. So now, what are some stories from your wars, the wars that you've been through that help to illustrate your abilities and skills in this realm of leadership? I'm gonna have to think that. Yeah, that's what we want. War stories can be personal, they can be professional, it could be from your own life. I mean, you know, I'm keeping the pussy is it's a theory story. is a war, it's a war story. story. That's a war story. You know, the, one of, honestly, one of the biggest war stories that I've been, I feel like I, I keep, I'm still fighting the, the war. I keep, I, but the solutions that I've come up with is helping me to not lose the fight, which is, you know, dealing with all the amount of pressure that I have on my life, right? All of the things that I'm doing for everyone. Uh -huh. um, you know, wearing so many different hats from, you know, trying to balance being a wife <laughs> in a complicated marriage at times because mm -hmm. I'm doing these type of things. Right. right? I spend a lot of time away from home um, to build myself. Okay, so give me a moment that illustrates that because stories are about moments. What stories about moments? You know, you're leaving again? You just got back. And what is this one for? And why, what is this, what are you doing again? So I find myself trying to not lose my mind and explaining exactly what. What did you say? That's what she said. Yeah. What did you say? I said nothing. I stood there for a second because it was shocking that we're still having these conversations after all this time. It made sense when we had the conversation the first time I decided to spend money on myself in a way that was unnatural in our relationship because it didn't benefit her, it benefited me. Uh huh. The next conversation when we're traveling so much, because I spent money just to go to a conference, but now I'm traveling. So I'm spending money traveling consistently, which seems to be like something that's pulled out of our household that's unnatural to our relationship. Uh huh. But now I'm having the same conversation about having to leave again and sign up for something again to develop myself. Yep. So I took a moment to just sit and think about that. Because in my mind, I am benefiting the family. Here, let's stop right here mm -hmm. because it's, you're doing good. And I just want to wrap up this piece. Okay. I'm benefiting the family. Everything I do will benefit my wife yep. alongside me. Uh-huh. And all I'm asking for is support. Emotional support. Emotional support. Mm -hmm. Figuring out ways that you can help me before... I lose my mind trying to balance it all out. So I said, I'm doing this for us. This is for us. But the reality of it is, my wife was only seeing it as a benefit to me, my hobby, my things that I like to do, working on myself, not working on our future, not working on us together. Mm. So the conversation was very, um, intense in nature because now I'm becoming defensive. Now I feel like I'm married to someone who doesn't understand me, mm -hmm. who doesn't get, who doesn't, we're not on the same page. And I think we were good when I was thinking housewife, picket fence, sitting down, raising family. But now my real aspiration, the thing that kept me burning inside is coming out and it doesn't align with who she believes that I should be. Oh, okay. Very good. You like that black house right there? I love black houses. <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I know they can be very sexy black houses. 
hey, we were just you were just saying this is going to be a tough one, but you think it's necessary. Yes. Why is it necessary? Because I know that I'm not the only person who's going through this. Uh huh. I know that this is something that many a marriage has probably faced because you marry a person, you don't expect them to change into something else. Yes. We expect to have the same exact person that we marry, the same thoughts, the same goals, the same aspirations. So if my story could help someone else deal with that, which I know it, it, it will help. Oh, it definitely else. will, but it's gonna also open up a whole lot of issues in your own house. Yeah, but those are issues we need to deal with. Because what, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have to figure out the decision making, which we're in that process right now. Uh-huh. You're either going to be alongside this ride and figure out where your placement is or how I can how we can do this together. Or else what? Or else we need to figure out how to live separate lives and not be together. Wow. Because me to bury who I am to keep you comfortable goes against our whole reason of being married. Okay, now look, I'm the one who says life begins. I, I was on today's show, I told Brooke Shields life begins where your comfort zone ends. So I hear you, but not everybody's as comfortable getting out of their comfort zone as you and me. What about that? Hey. If you're comfortable being uncomfortable, then stop complaining about it. Well, <laughs> no. Sit in it. But if you really, truly want to make some change, you have to do the things that are hard. I agree. I agree. You know, it's just sometimes it's tough to bring the spouse with you. Yes. Okay? I know that for a fact. Yes. And it's very tough. But very necessary if this marriage is to be to continue. I agree. There's, there's no middle ground there. If wow. we're not on the same page, then we're not on the same page, and that's the reality. How do we get on the same page? When we may well, listen, I may be the delusional one thinking that all she needs to do is get on the same page. Maybe there's something that I need to evaluate on how I'm handling this. But I don't want to sacrifice it. Maybe it's ways to find like, that there could be some, some way that she can help me in this process. That maybe I'm asking, not even maybe, but I may be asking her to do something that she's not comfortable with. Asking her to sacrifice herself to be on this vibe with you. I'm telling you she's not comfortable with it. That's why you're having this issue, because she's not comfortable being outside of her comfort zone. And there's people who just can't do it. So... I, I just want you to be aware you're treading on dangerous grounds, you know? That's what leadership is all about. That's what leadership is all about. That's what about. leadership is all about. There wow. Nothing comfortable at times. So you have to make the hard decisions. So you have to be able to figure out how to lead your own life so that you can be a leader for others. Well, like so many of these celebrity entrepreneurs adventures, we're here at Wells Fargo Bank. Mm -hmm. That's the destination. I, I, I always do this. Like I make these videos going to Wells Fargo Bank. Now we're going to wrap it up. We're going to go ask that bank teller if he knows who, who is Tony Robbins. Okay. <laughs> and he's not going to know. <laughs> hey, good morning. Just, I, I'm going to make a withdrawal. I just have a quick question before we start. Do you know who is Tony Robbins? Yes. You do? You ever go to any of his stuff? Watch any of his videos? No? I, I Okay. Oh, wow. Very good. How about you, Miss? Do you know who Tony Robbins is? No? No? You're, you're the exception. Okay, very good. Well, there's, there's the first one. The first bank teller ever to know who is Tony Robbins.